What's going on, guys? Welcome back to a special edition episode right here in the All Elite Podcast. I guess we can say episode number 99.5. <laughs> we're not quite at 100 yet. That's Thursday. But we're here to do a quick, uh, honest review of AW All Out right here in the All Elite Podcast and right here on the Holds Bar Network, which is your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. I'm your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, your master of ceremonies, Kyle Masters, always joined by my co-host. She's EVP Giggles. The heartbreak chick and the queen of the indies herself. That's Tiffany. Yay. Yay. Uh, uh, I have a question for you. Oh, you have a question. Yes, I have a question. Can you oh. answer for me? Um, Maybe. Who won the picks? Oh, you know what? I actually, it's funny you're just saying that. I'm actually pulling out my book here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I won the pick. I forgot to, uh, I actually forgot to t- tally it. Um, yeah, I think I won. But uh, let me just. Uh, I think Ray was at five. I think I was at six. Well then, let's let's go over your answers right away. So you got Soul, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. Eddie Kingston, no. Uh, Jurassic Express, no. Uh, Dark Order, did they they won? Right? No, I said Jurassic Express. I didn't say Young Bucks. You yeah, said, no. Oh, okay. I, I said you, you just, I'm going over your answers. <laughs> oh. Okay. You put Jurassic Express, so no, because they Young Bucks won. Mm-hmm. Dark Order lost, so no. Right. Matt Hardy, I guess, won, so yes. Yeah, I got that one, yeah. Uh, Sheeta won, Orange Cassidy won, Moxley won, and FTR won. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Good for you, Tiff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray got Britt Baker, so that's wrong. He picked Darby, that's wrong. Young Bucks, that's correct. Dark Order wrong. Matt Hardy correct. Sheeta correct. OC correct. MJF wrong. FTR. So you got one, two, three, four, five. You got five. Mm-hmm. I got Big Spool correct. Unfortunately, Sean Spears, no. Darn. I really was hoping he'd win that. Jurassic Express, mm-hmm. no. Dark Order, no. Sammy G, no. I got Sheeta, OC, and FTR. So I got four. So it was pretty close. So you, uh, there you go. You put the damn crown on. There you go. There you go. <laughs> no more Burger King. So, so, you had, so you had the six. Ray had five and I had four. Wow. So I did pretty poorly. But uh, it was a very, very interesting uh, pay-per-view on Saturday. Uh, lots to talk about. And again, guys, we like to keep it positive here on the pod. We like to keep it fun, exciting. But I will be, I guess you can say, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess I could be, uh, I'm going to be truthful. I'm going to call out AW on their crap whenever there is something. You got it. We got it. We got to stay true. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. That's the word I'm going. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything for you. But other than that, the event was okay on Saturday. I didn't. I I wasn't too disappointed. It was. Uh, I did have a hunch as to why the pacing was off on the pay per view, and yeah. I was I was right. It was about 93 degrees uh, over there Fahrenheit with with major humidity. There's a lot of fan accounts and people in attendance tweeting saying that. The, the heat and the humidity was just way too much, and it was wearing them out. I got to give a lot of credit, though, to these wrestlers. Even even here, like, I've been slowly going back to a lot of the indie shows around here, and um, mostly in Jersey, and they have to do it outside unless they get special permission to do it inside. And if they do it inside, I think in New Jersey, it's like 25%. Um, but, you know, I, I can't imagine. I mean, I just went to Synergy a couple of weeks ago and it was outside and it then it started raining, too. So oh, that made no. it hard, too. But it's got to be difficult to be like working in these kind of conditions. And, you know, like kudos to them to try to right? do the best that they can, Um, you know, with everything with the pandemic. And they're trying so hard to give us, you know, wrestling. And But I give them a lot of credit to be sitting doing this in that degree of weather yeah. and it's different than what we're used to because the humidity is worse down there. It's it's tough. And you can you've really seen it on a lot of the matches. Like the pacing in the beginning of the matches would start out good and then you could see like gradually over the time of the match the both wrestlers were just like dry heaving. They they were sweating buckets. Like it was just it was tough. It, it it's tough to do. And especially when they're in a place like Florida where it's literally right. humid like almost all the time. It's crazy, and I don't know what, what like, where do you go from here? Like, do you maybe work on maybe getting somewhere you can go indoors and going back to what you usually you started out as, or maybe you pick somewhere indoors where you can at least get like a ten percent capacity and space people out. You know, it, it'd be easier on the wrestlers, and and it's not exactly what you can do with an outside venue, but like the heat 
is a big factor, and I think it played a big factor with this pay-per-view because if you take away the heat, I think the crowd is more into it and the wrestlers are, are more into it as pace-wise. So I think the pay-per-view does get better if you take out the humidity. I honestly think it is a big factor, and, and I don't think you should be judging... I don't think people should be judging the pay-per-view so harsh. I've seen a lot of people very, very harsh on this pay-per-view, and I'm like, you can't really too much you can in some aspects to it but like you can't judge them on pacing at all right i think what happened to me like i feel like you this wasn't their best pay-per-view and it's bad because i kind of compared the fact that i was there live at all out last year um and it was an amazing card and again we have to also realize that they're trying the best that they can even also in the pandemic we don't have everybody here that you know Mm -hmm. we could be wrestling and they did the best that they can and yes there were some really good enjoyable matches and there was a lot of um uh, i don't know it's like i'm kind of hit and miss with this pay-per-view and i think me personally and i think it had to do with a lot of people as well that felt the same way that i did is the vibe felt off after matt hardy and sammy g and I really yeah. felt it. And I was here and I had a, I had a little get together with a bunch of people over here to watch the pay-per-view. And they were like, you were a little off out of it. I was like, I don't know. It kind of killed my vibe after. And I was so stoked. And like, when we got into the whole Britt Baker and Big Swole, like I was pumped in my house and people hated that match, yeah. you know? And I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I couldn't get back and I feel horrible I think I think me personally, I think I got back into it once we got to the Orange Cassidy and Jericho match. Um, and that sucks because Thunder Rosa and and Sheeta were amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know how you want to go about like talking about this pay-per-view because I can kind of go back and forth all over the place yeah. with <laughs> these matches. And yeah. one thing I know, think was it was I think I felt long. To me, the paper is kind of too long. Do you think it was because of the fact that we also got uh, um, the car- the red carpet walking? Then we had uh, we this I didn't like either. I don't know how it is by you in Canada. We went from YouTube to TNT yeah. back to YouTube, <laughs> no, back to the pay per view, and I think that made it a little long. And don't get me wrong, because I can go to shows and I'd be happy with it. But it was a little weird. I'm like, oh, now I have to switch this on my television and switch this and switch this. And it made me a little crazy that I had to do it. But again, like I always say this is that I understand on a business side, right? So you're pumping your YouTube and we're trying to get hype. And a lot of people are comparing this to being WrestleMania, right? Like this was AEW's WrestleMania, mm-hmm. right? And I hate comparing it to that. But I guess, you know, it is their big pay-per-view. Me and Kyle always say this. Um but it was it was a lot of craziness going back and forth. I felt like so maybe it was a little long. So I missed I out on the TNT of, thing because I, I didn't get that up yeah, here. It was so I missed promos. out on the countdown. <laughs> it was it was a lot of promos going on pretty much on the channel, and I guess it was really like if you weren't following, and it was kind of giving a little bit of what was going to happen or builds. So that's pretty much what you were seeing on it. So like I said, I understand on TNT because we're watching them on TNT weekly. Um, so we should put a little something on TNT. And so then you, my yeah. ideal pay-per-view is 6.30 p.m. You have your your pre-show, your buy-in, whatever they call it. And <laughs> you have one match on there or two matches you can fit in there to get you pumped for the yeah. pay-per-view. You start at 7 o'clock, you end at 10 o'clock. That's it. You have a yeah. three, you, you, you keep it at three hours. It, that formula has worked a lot in a, a lot of other companies. Um, but I also think because it's their big pay-per-view that I understand of it being the four hours mm-hmm. again. Um, so I think if, and then remember too, we're not seeing AEW every month, right? Like pay-per-view wise, yeah. right? We're getting it every couple, like every quarter pretty much. And I think also we were discussing this here uh, the other day too, is that I think we had, fight for the falling at Friday fest we had back to back within three weeks and then on top of that it's like you only had what a month to build Mm -hmm. to AEW, and i think it was too much back to back and i understand the fight for the falling was important that tony khan wanted their charity which i'm all for but maybe it was all clumped together but at the same time too we have to understand that everything that happened with the pandemic as well yeah and um you know, they, they could, I understand the four-hour thing. Yeah, it's their big pay-per-view. If you want to do four hours, that's fine. It's just 8 o'clock, I think, was a little bit too late because the pay-per-view ended by 12. Even people watching at home 
It was uh, a lot. Myself, I was I was getting tired at eleven o'clock. I was out of it. So if you start your four hour pay per view at seven, yeah, I think you're done that's by a 11. good time. I think I think you're right. I think seven's a good time, and you're probably right. Six thirty would be a good pre show. Seven o'clock, um, and you don't need to watch again. The like, red carpet um, was not needed. I think <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> it, needed. It was, it, they could have done it. without that. Yeah, but <laughs> was, again, like I, I said, know what they're trying to do, but. Look, it's you know what it's fun it's another way to get people involved watch yeah. the youtube channel you know and the and youtube yes the youtube you know mm. how i talk but uh <laughs> that's what i pretty much think like it is but um yeah i guess i guess me and kyle like again like i said i'm not trashing it at all uh you know because i i like to sit and talk about all good points so but i think that was just how i kind of felt about the pay-per-view i think and, and i can't compare it to last year yeah so. But uh, before we get diving into the pay-per-view, guys, again, this is 99.5, but Thursday is our big 100th and 100 episode anniversary. Uh, we're so excited. We have a lot of stuff planned for it. I, I'm going to be doing a whole day's worth of work tomorrow. I think, look, Fat Pharaoh has joined the podcast. <laughs> look at that. He'll be there uh, live and well, and we'll get an update on Fat Pharaoh, I'm sure, during the episode of where he's been and maybe some stories with him. But yeah, it's going to be a very, very fun, fan interactive episode. Um, I have a few things planned. We have some clips planned. We have uh, some of your guys' clips that you sent us out. So, guys, if you want to be featured on AEP and you're a big fan of AEP, there is a way to do it. So, you're going to want to send us a 30-second max uh, clip of a video or audio. It could be audio if you'd like in a celebration of 100 episodes with AEP. Maybe tell us how you found us. Maybe go over like how much you like you know you guys like us. Not trying to toot our own horns, but uh, just a celebration clip of uh, you celebrating with us, and we'll play it on the podcast. So uh, it's going to be a very very awesome episode. Um, audio wise, if you guys are audio listeners, not sure how this going to translate over. We might keep that episode just video because there's going to be a lot of clips and a lot of stuff. That's shown on video that you guys won't be able to see if you're an audio listener. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make it audio yet, but uh, I'll think about it. But if you guys want to be part of AP 100, all you have to do is send us your video or a voice clip, 30 seconds max, to podcast at gmail.com. And then uh, we'll uh, definitely show it up on the show. So, yeah. Yeah. Excited. I can't oh, so we're 100 excited. episodes yeah. in crazy remember like we started okay i'm gonna like i feel like i'm gonna cry the next episode kyle knows me very well like i'm gonna get very sentimental and like yeah, we started this back uh guy it's amazing because i was going through all these clips and i'm going back to like our old episode i'm going man even with not even just the network but with this episode in particular we've come a long way yeah. <laughs> from like the first couple of episodes who were which were oof like even graphic wise like i wasn't the i wasn't the best back then i've i've, I've gotten better over time and I've had help uh, with some people in the community, but it's been it's been interesting. There's a lot of interesting clips that I found, and uh, man, Jan- like we started this back in January of 2019, around the time they first announced AW, and like, I remember the Tiff just going to me and saying, "This is going to be big. We got to do this." And I'm like, "Right, let's get on board. Let's let's get a podcast going." And it's been awesome ever since. It's been awesome uh, le- getting new friends and, and and experiencing all this with you guys in the community. So hopefully. You're a fan of this podcast. You've uh, you experience you're experiencing the same uh, joy that we are with this 100th episode. So I hope you guys can tune in for that on Thursday. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, let's get into the pay per view. And I want to point this out first before we uh, dive too much into it. So when you're at when you're attending these events that they're having, since now they're allowed fans back in the building, mm-hmm. um, they have these signs everywhere, and these are freaking <laughs> hilarious. I'm going to show you guys right now on screen. They have these little white, little foldable signs everywhere with AEW su- superstars on it, and and it, these like socially distant messages. These are so good. So you have Moxley there saying, "Be like Moxley, stay socially distant." You know him being like the socially distant, like regardless of COVID, he just stays away from everybody. You got uh, Britt Baker, be a role model, wash your hands. That's that's an important one, even without COVID. The amount of times I see people not washing their hands, is disgusting. So <laughs> be a role model. Be like Britt Baker. Wash your hands. You got uh, your boy Orange Cassidy there. Keep your hands to yourself. That's fantastic. And then uh, Jericho. Hey, you idiot. Wear a mask. I love that. That's my favorite one. I I wish I could order these signs. I wish these were like these were like or- orderable posters. Really, that's that hard, Kyle. Just print the picture. I know. I know. Like yeah. you know what you what everything you do with your graphics, you could do it yourself. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Anywho, Rehu, uh, all out again. It was an interesting pay per view. Um, 
The buy-in was interesting, so they added a match to the buy-in on, on, on the day of All Out. So originally it was Private Party and uh, against and uh, Reynolds. Reynolds and Silver, but originally, originally it was Britt Baker and um, Big, Big Swall, Swall, which they did move to the main card. Uh, Tony Khan listened to the to Outrage, yeah, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that ended up being a very entertaining, uh, I guess you can call it a cinematic match. But uh, anyway, yeah. it's a pre-show. They added in Joey Janela against Serpentico. Very weird. <laughs> I'm I like, like that's an odd going, match to add. <laughs> I really thought that they were going to add those two into the, the Battle Royale. Yeah. That's what I originally thought. But I guess they figured that they had to fill in the spot of like half an hour. And since they were originally going to have two matches, that they had to fill it with something else. And this is why everybody goes down to the pay-per-views and the shows because you don't know what could happen if somebody gets injured or whatever the scenario is. And they, li- I mean, and again... You know, they listen to the fans, so they move this over to the main card. So, um, but it was good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I like Joey Janela at it. Like, I still follow him, and I love the fact that I get to still see him in GCW. So it's great. And he's got a lot better. And he's lost a ton of weight um, as well. And, and I love that. I got confused at first because then it was like Sunny Kiss came out and I was like, wait a minute, are we do having like a tag team going on here or handicap? Maybe they should have. I don't know. I don't Because of the fact not because we were already getting tag team with Private Party and John Silver and okay, Reynolds. Maybe. So it makes sense to have a singles. So but like it. I don't know. It didn't have anything that kind of stuck out because I didn't take any notes, but, no. uh, you know, it felt nothing like a dark crazy. Match. Yeah. And nothing crazy that stuck out to me about this match. Yeah. And then uh, your boys coming out, you know, like that match was great. I think Silver and Reynolds got more of a showing than your boys. Unfortunately, well, they look very good. Now, remember, like I said, and I've posted this before, these guys have been in the ring together plenty Yeah, I was going to say, didn't they They faced yes. each other a lot in, in House a of Glory. This was like a House of Glory Not, rematch. Yeah, that wasn't like House of Glory, but I've seen them in Beyond Wrestling okay. as well. Um, so, And there's matches. If you look them up on YouTube, because I, I found them and I posted them before as well. I mean, make sure you guys follow me, because a lot of times, like, if there's something really good, like, I'll I'll share it. Um, of like the follow me scene. too if you want to. So yeah, follow him. <laughs> <laughs> but I I post a lot the of the indie <laughs> So no no like if you want to watch like old cool stuff to like talk about a lot of these guys in the indie scene prior to AEW, like I'll post stuff a lot. And me like again, I've been a hu- I'm more of a fan of John Silver in the ring because I've seen him so much in single side and I preach so much about him and Chris Statlander and their intergender matches. So good. I've seen, I've seen them both. Obviously I've seen CZW outlaw. Like I I've seen them like all over the place. So this was, and it was so fun. I, I forgot to send uh, Kyle the picture, but like Brad loves to troll me all the time with private party. So he always gives me shit. He's like, oh, John Silver and Rebels are going to win or whatever, you know. But again, like, we're, we're all fans of, like, the both of them. And by the end of the match, I stood in front of the television giving Brad the finger. And, like, yeah, your boys private won. party won. What? <laughs> your boys won finally. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was like, so eat this. See? Eat this. Yeah. Because my boys won. But let's be real here. This match stuck out to me because here's two teams that are – they know each other very well and it was such a me i'm a big fan of fast pace like i love fast pace and i've noticed that i like a lot of cruiserweight kind of style wrestlers um so this was so good and you're right and it made john silver and reynolds look really good but they yeah, are they good. stuck out the most to me like i was yeah. like oh okay like i have i know private party's been about i didn't see a lot of what i've seen from them it was almost like reynolds and silver were getting uh their bigger push but not the victory in a sense. Right. And, and that's okay. It looked very it didn't good. make though. them look bad. It no. made them look really good, right? Like you're sitting here again, like I'm going off of my memory right now. Yeah. But this was such a great match that stuck out to me that I could sit and talk about. Um, but yeah, like they're so good. They're, they're so good. And I'm, I'm so glad like it didn't make them look awful. It actually showed them off really good. Yeah. And then at this point, like I was getting like pumped for this pay-per-view. I was... When it, was, when it was getting ready to start, I, w- I was hype. I had like a, I tweeted it out, I had like a WrestleMania type vibe feel for this. I'm like, okay, like I'm excited. I can't wait for this to happen. And um, so we started off, we opened, I think we opened the pay-per-view off with uh, Young yeah. Bucks and, and, and Jurassic Express. And I'm like, okay, that's a perfect way to open a pay-per-view. Two really hot teams and, and 
I think they could, or maybe did they? I thought they opened with Britt Baker, didn't they not? Well, uh, yeah, they opened up with Britt Baker. Okay, so they did open well, up with a cinematic match. Which right. I really <laughs> feel was perfect for it. And again, like I said, I saw so much hate on social media. It was media. interesting. Like, I, I mean, like, I was getting it in with people on Twitter, and I'm like, See, this is this is why I talk about like I I I am a positive person. I'm a very realistic person. I'm very real, um, and and uh, I always say this right. We came into this with an open mind, and I don't like to trash anything. Um, but you know, like I'm gonna be give honest opinion. But this, like, I'm telling you, Kyle, like, I was sitting here dying laughing. Oh, I was. Like, too. I was like, this is the most, fun. like, actually, me and Kyle are messaging. And we were like, Kyle, I think, even said he was like, I'm about to piss my pants, right? It was funny. Like, <laughs> I was sitting here dying again. Like, I don't understand, like, why people get so upset. And I'm like, you have to take it as it is. And I was like, this is really funny. I it's was supposed like, to be more entertaining than an actual match. Right. <laughs> and like, I feel like we can continue this feud as well and actually have an in in ring match i think eventually we'll get because i don't think this is definitely the end of it with swole winning you know Britt baker is going to be heated saying like oh you you know we haven't we actually have a match with each other i know i can beat you in the ring and you know she can say like it was always reba's fault for being a poor (laughs) assistant and she was just all over the place for you what was that accent she was doing that got me i'm like what is what (laughs) That accent she was pulling off. I'm like, what is she doing? Oh, man. Well, I love that Reba was getting in on this. And, you know, uh, like, kudos to you for being a good, good sport going into the trash can, coming out with the banana on the head. Yeah. And then we were <laughs> laughing, okay, about the Novocaine yeah. and Britt Baker. It's like, oh, I'm numb now. Okay, let's be realistic, right? If you're going to take a shot of Novocaine in your mouth, it doesn't take, it's not that instant when it numbs your, your mouth or whatever. So you going into the lake is not numbing it that quickly. But again, it was that laugh factor and i was like okay this i feel like this was the best opening to a pay-per-view and i i enjoyed it <laughs> as as silly or i mean people are coming at me like oh this is cringe no this was funny like come take it as it is right that's how i feel take it i do as agree it with you i don't think i will Slightly disagree. They shouldn't have opened the pay per view. I think maybe they should have really? been the second match. I think Young Bucks and Jurassic Express should have opened the pay per view. I think if with it with crowd back, you need to have a, a something to open with a match itself. But you already had opened up with a match because of the buy in, so that they yeah, were not already everyone's there, up Tiff. Not matches. everyone's like not everyone's walking in their seats. Well, if they the were buy-in. right, like you don't know, you weren't there. You know, I like know, I said, but, but if people were you, there watching it, they got two matches there. Okay, technically, let, let's be like technical, right? Like technically. Like, they should have been there already, and they should have been pumped up from the two matches. Then we go into the pay-per-view. I personally don't think the Young Bucks and Jurassic should have opened it. I think this was the perfect way to lighten the mood, that we could sit here, we could laugh, you know, and be in that. And that's where I was mentally, that I was like, this is funny. I was like, this put me, okay, I'm I'm, I'm hype. I mean, I was already hype with Private Party and John, uh, John Silver and Alex Reynolds. But, like, now I'm even more hype because this shit is cracking me up. And it did exactly what it needed to do. And I thought the Battle Royal would open the pay-per-view, too. That's why I, my original thought was going to be the Battle Royal. And even even that, that was uh, that was probably the most interesting Battle Royal I've ever seen in my entire life. I, think, I feel like, you know, also where that was placed as well, it was too stacked, right? We talked about this on a prediction show. It was it way was too odd. stacked to I, be in the open, the opening. But I... I not their know. best battle royal. That's all I'm going to say there. That was, uh, I, I loved a lot of more other casino battle royals. This one was a little bit all over the place. A lot of interesting moments. I mean, one that sticks out to me, obviously, is the, the I don't know if that, 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 that was needed. That was very, I think it just, it's, it's, it's worse looking back at it now because of what happened to Matt Hardy. But right. the whole Darby in the, in the bag, in the, in the body bag thing with yeah, the t- tax in it and a power bomb. I was like, ooh, like that's that. It didn't look. I, I think he's obviously okay because it's Darby of all people. But man, yeah, it just it didn't that look good. Should have been in like a regular match, like not in a royal. Like I was a little confused with the thumbtacks as well. And I'm all for it. I watch a lot of deathmatch wrestling, um, but. I don't know in a battle royale, and I get like you you have a little bit little time to shine in one. So there's a lot going on with Royal. The ending messed me up. <laughs> the whole thing. It, I was sitting there laughing, like laughing, not like 
loving it, laughing, going, like, what the hell is going on with the whole Jake with his bag, like, showing him yeah. the snake and, like, going up and, like, <laughs> like what are you doing? I don't know. It was I just, just awkward. I th- really thought Eddie was going to take it at one point, and I was, like, again, um, I was getting all excited with that because I love Eddie Kingston. But, I mean, I'm okay with Archer, you know, winning this. Yeah, I, I, I tweeted out, I'm like, booking-wise and storyline-wise, it makes the it most sense. sense him winning. Right, like he, he comes in and just destroys almost everybody, and that's what his thing is, right? We talked about on the pod, yeah, like he, he should be he should be coming out and just killing people, and it should have been a walk. It, it, it should have it was but, kind of a walk okay. away. So this was kind of confusing to me, and I brought this up in my house, and I was like, okay, I was like, it's a little weird to me because he lost to Cody, right? And like in theory, like I've seen him in New Japan and he's a beast, right? And like we built him, but then he lost to Cody. So, and he really hasn't been doing anything on Dynamite, right? So why? <laughs> like, so it now you're going to have a match with Moxley. So my, my thought is, so what happens if you beat Moxley, but you couldn't beat Cody? Like, I don't know. That's like where my mind goes. <laughs> so me, I don't think he's going to beat Moxley. To I, well, I everyone's I, everyone's saying like oh this is going to be the full gear match. I think they're having this match before full gear. I mean I don't know. I don't think they're waiting until then. If they they can, I, I, I saw I an know, interesting. Like, there's, I, there's, a lot, there's a lot of theories with it. I saw ahead. an interesting theory. Someone okay. says that it's going to be Moxley versus the cleaner Kenny when he's fully turned. Well, I've been full gear. saying this. I've been saying this on all the podcasts, and I've been saying this on a lot of people's podcasts that I've been co like co guesting on, and I've been saying that the way that it's been looking, haven't I been saying that Kenny was the one that was going to turn heel? That everybody thought it was going to be Hangman, but that I really felt that it was going to be Kenny. And then there was another thing that we were talking about here. Oh, I thought you meant the title match. I'm like, when have you ever said that they're going to face each other at full gear? Not at full gear. That's what I. But you went no, from what no, I just no, said I to that. Said, I said the way that it's been booking. <laughs> That it looked like that Kenny is yeah. going to be the one that takes the belt. I was just confused because of... no, 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 no. I'm not saying full gear. I was saying in general. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that's you went from what I said to that. And I'm like, wait, what? Well, well, yeah, no. From full gear, I don't think full gear. But I said that I feel like who's the best? Like I think eventually, like Hangman Page is going to have the title. But how much of a better way to, you know, gain the title? Not from Moxley. From cleaner kenny i feel like like that's what i feel like the storyline is going towards Mm -hmm. but i really like that theory when i read that last night i was like okay so that that makes more sense so i think in between now and full gear whenever that is uh, they're probably gonna book it as like lance archer can't wait any longer and he wants moxley now and wants you know wants pizza his ass now and they'll have their title match and then something's gonna happen in there that's i don't know moxley ends up winning which is gonna be interesting as well and this so, was going to be that theory of like, and this is what I brought up on Bob Culture podcast. I was like, who is, you know, who is going to carry AEW on their back? That's why I said MJF wasn't going to win this because I didn't feel he was the guy, you know, to be representing uh, AEW, uh, right? <laughs> he's in some uh, water, hot water right now with uh, with Wardlow, Wardlow after that match. I <laughs> saying that too. And I was like, this is where it was going to start. Well, it started, but I really felt Wardlow was going to cost him the match. So and he kind of, in a way, he did. He and did. I, and in a way, Moxley also cheated. Yeah. Because <laughs> MJF cheated behind the ref's back with the, he was about to cheat the ring so he decided well since Wardlow has the ref distracted I'm going to cheat so in a way it's like That's everybody's right. at wrong here. and this ain't over and you know it and MJF tweeted that as well and he was like so you guys aren't going to talk about the fact that Moxley cheated so you know this isn't going to be over they said dynamite was going to be crazy this week that look out for dynamite that dynamite this week was going to have like special surprise um so but that was a good match, though. For what it was, it was a it decent match. It really was. It made MJF look really good. And yeah. a lot of people were saying MJF was going to take this, but it didn't make him look bad at all. It I was, was close. actually really <laughs> impressed. Like, yeah. he's getting better. Um, you know, I personally still think he's still green. I mean, God, what is he, 23, 24 years old? He's still young. Um, and again, like I said, this isn't the guy who's – gonna be carrying aw on his back not yet maybe in a couple of years not now yeah he was but. he definitely put up a very good match against moxley so it'll be I'm, I'm interested to see what this wardlow 
situation is going to be like going forward and it, what's going to come of that. So, um, uh, let's talk about, uh, uh, the women's match. I thought, uh, was probably one of the matches of the night, actually. Yeah. If you're looking at it, I know it's hard to look at a lot of matches in determining a match of the night because of, obviously, the pacing. And, you know, it, it's tough when a crowd's not into it. When a crowd's not into it, it does take away a lot from the matches. But So you kind of have to watch matches with that out of the picture. And from what I watched, Sheeta in, in Thunder Rosa put one of the like the greatest women's matches I've seen in 2020 so far. And they, they it was very, very good. It was very even. There's a lot of near falls. And it just showed that Thunder Rosa is legit. And if, if people didn't know anything about her beforehand, and they got a really good glimpse of her now, and hopefully we get to work with NWA more in the future. I know there's been talks, and there's been it's been the talks have been kind of everywhere with with uh, AW and NWA. Like, is it going to be for sure, or you know, was this just a one time thing? And like Tony Khan said in this presser, like you know, this was just uh, a, a lucky thing that Billy Corgan let us use Thunder Rosa for this. So. And hopefully there's something in the future. So it'll be interesting to see for that. But as for this match, I loved it. I loved it. Even the ending, it didn't make Rosa look weak at all. Like This was a no. very, very well done match. This was a very good technical match. Um, and if you're not a fan of women's wrestling, this was the match to get you to be a real fan of women's wrestling. And I love the fact that Thunder Rosa plays normally like a face, but she knew how to play a heel in this scenario. So I... I really enjoyed this. And, you know, you kind of can't complain and be like, oh, it was like a two minute match. This was a long match. And it was really good. It got me hyped. It really was a mm -hmm. good match. I enjoyed it. I want to see more Thunder Rosa. Like, if we have more women like her in like AEW, like, forget it. So, you guys wanted more women, like good matches. Like, I, I didn't, don't think I seen anybody really say anything bad about this match no. on social. Like, it was good. I think because they knew, like, right? Like, you knew that this is going to be a very good match going into it. And you, you can't sit here and criticize it too much. And now I sit here thinking, I mean, I'm wearing my Holy Sheeta shirt. Excuse me. My Holy Sheeta shirt today. Um, I was in there thinking, like, what's next for Sheeta? They, there wasn't, I thought there was a little bit of a pause at the end after she won. I thought maybe someone would come out. But uh, I don't know where she goes from here. I don't know what uh, what storyline they're going to get into. I don't know if this is going to lead to. I don't know if Nyla Rose is going to try to get back into it or, or something. I, I I it's tough to see with the women's title picture right now. So hopefully we get the start of it uh, starting this week or maybe next week. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we might as well talk about this and get this out of the way because it was a very interesting moment and it was the most talked about thing out of all out. It's still being talked about today because of uh, conflicting reports. So Sammy Guevara and Matt Hardy were supposed to have a broken rules match. And uh, this match didn't start in the ring, which was confusing. So Matt Hardy was at the edge of the football field. And they're in the back. They're they're fighting each other. And then Sammy, the fight, I laughed at the beginning. Though. When Sammy pulled up in the golf cart, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. That's freaking hilarious. And Matt Hardy running is, like, the funniest thing <laughs> watching him run because he doesn't run yeah. normal. Uh, yeah. They ended up at this, like, uh, was it, the scissor lift thing. Uh, yeah, and kind of like thing, yeah. They pull like, this spot where he spears Matt Hardy off. I don't know if the tables were just maybe not in the right place or they yeah. needed an extra table. But Matt Hardy's head ends up going off the cement. And it looked bad because he looked like he was, bad. like, out cold. Uh, 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 Aubrey threw up the X, which I'm being told after the event that that was a time where Tony Khan went into her earpiece and said, okay, like, end the match uh, now. Yeah. We have to see what's going on here. And yeah. then they, they kind of, like, started the match back up again. Well, I mean, the match didn't stop there. She just threw up the X. There was no bell. So, like, Matt Hardy eventually like, came to, and, he, you know, he, you could tell that he was not right. But yeah. then it was, at the same time, it's it's tough, right? It's yeah. tough with wrestling when they do stuff like this if it's real or not. That's where you, you can't really tell, uh, like, because a lot of wrestlers could sell really good. You know, a lot of wrestlers are very good at selling certain injuries. So, the, was this a big sell or was this real? And I think it was real, obviously, because you saw yeah. when Sammy was trying to hold him up that he was Sammy, falling. You, you could actually see Sammy saying stop. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you caught that, but we caught that here that Sammy was actually telling him to stop during the match. Oh, that's messed up. And then they so, actually finally stopped it. And then this is where the conflicting reports come in. It was stopped and started back up. The, the, the time frame between when it was stopped and started back up apparently is not the sufficient time to do a concussion protocol test. Right. And apparently that was it was said that that was done in between then. 
and then Doc Samson cleared him, and then they they restarted the match, but then went straight to the finish, and right. they went right to that 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 scaffolding jump where Sammy fell down, and there are a lot of people saying you know maybe they shouldn't have let they should have ended the match right there. Matt Hardy shouldn't have been if he had a concussion, shouldn't have allowed to climb that high and. It was very, very like it took a lot out of me personally. I think yeah, it took a lot too. out of the fans, and it just from there, it's hard to get back into a pay per view when something like that happens—a scary, real moment where I think it should have ended. In my personal opinion, I think uh, when Aubrey threw out the first X yeah, and should've. was told in her earpiece that should have been done. You can pick this the storyline back up. It's it's not the big storyline on the card. This is a storyline you can pick back up later on. Right. This could have been done on a dynamite or something, but. Ugh, you know, I don't know if you saw this, but like Rebby was flipping yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, Rebby does have a tendency of she's had she's had a history of being very vocal and very yeah. out there on Twitter. So I do take what she said. I am credible what she says, but then like it's 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 odd because she says that, and then Tony Khan comes out and says that Matt Hardy is fine. He's gone through CT and whatever scans, and he they cleared him for concussions. And then like Rebby says, like, no, what do you mean? He's still. It's weird. How Tony Khan says he's on his way home. And she, right, he's like, no, 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 we're still in the hospital, and you know, he he, he had one hundred, one thousand percent has a concussion, so it's yeah, it's odd because she's she's had a, she has a history, so it's it, it's very very tough to sit well, here. It just looks and fully so believe. bad. I mean, you wouldn't like me as a woman, like you know, like if you see like your husband or your boyfriend get hurt or whatever, like it's 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 horrible. You're gonna mm-hmm. freak out. You don't want anything to happen to them. So. Yeah, they could have. They could. They should have just ended it. I think it would have been better. It would have been a disappointment. But like you said, we probably could have picked this up like out of dynamite or maybe future down the line. Um, so she, I don't. I don't. I don't like that it got picked up, and I don't like how it ended. I just, you know, again, it was just just it's didn't a very make tough sense. It was silly. It was just, you know, like I would have rather them ended it and do it later. And like I think maybe the fan base uh probably would appreciate that better because again health is so important and tony always preached this right since the beginning that we started doing ap that it was very important but they have the doctors there and they want to take care of their staff so um you know that's such a good feeling to know and to see that it got continued on is 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 a scary feeling so yeah i don't know what's going to go on from now so does that mean that it's ended are we going to eventually get you know another match with them do we want well, another match i, I mean think you guys sound off i want to know we're going to find out for sure on Dynamite this week, because as far as we know, that tweet that Tony Khan said, he's going to be there on Dynamite. Okay, so yeah. whether it's going to be a health update or what, uh, my my gut feeling thinks that it's going to be Matt Hardy saying he's going to step away and kind of like, he. I think he's going to come out and say like, you know what, it was my fault. I wanted to start, the, I wanted to finish the match. So I forced them to, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to finish and finish off Sammy, but you know, I should, shouldn't have done that. He's going to like, you know, be apologetic and say, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a step away, like you know, quote unquote storyline. I'm gonna take a step away and, you know, kind of re regain myself and kind of like you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Do you think it was funny because everybody was saying this? All three mats got hurt on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we totally forgot about Matt Seidel's like uh, yeah. great debut in the Battle Royal where he came out <laughs> and stuff that people were. Oh, poor him. guy, dude. Because I was pumped when I seen Matt Seidel sing on Tron. I'm like, oh my god, that's sick! Like, I was, <laughs> I was hype. And then he, <laughs> he goes for his uh, his shooting star press, and he just <laughs> slips. I, I gotta be honest with you. Like, I didn't know who it was because, again, like I said, I think he kind of was around like 2008. I think everybody had told me, so I wasn't watching wrestling back then. Um, so I wasn't sure. And it was just so formerly Evan Bourne. Brad. Brad said to me, he's like, oh, he's got one of the best, like, uh, was it Star Press? Yeah, and then all Press. Of a, Yeah, and then all of a sudden, like, he goes up there and slips, and then we just bust out laughing because we're like, oh, okay, well, that's not a good way to get Tiff to like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, t- he tweeted yeah. out saying, uh, it's time for new material. I guess the material in his boots worn down so much that it caused him to not get a good grip on the turnbuckle, and he just completely fell. But good on uh, Will Hobbs. Did you see Will Hobbs went yeah. over and checked on him, like, right away? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and, uh, like, I feel like they're trying to push him, you know, that they really are very impressed by him, so maybe he'll be, like, signed eventually, but people are very, very impressed with Will Hobbs. But good, you know, that's the good thing. You have to have that sportsmanship and, you know, make sure that he was okay. So, and he continued on. So, but, oh my God, all the memes and the little video clips that I've been seeing. Oh, yeah. so much, oh been, there's been a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so how about your boy, OC, Orange Cassidy <laughs> and uh, Jericho in the Mimosa Mayhem match. And, oh my God. So I was sitting there wondering how the setup is going to look. And man, they literally had two giant, 
platform side by side in the ring and had like a hot tub full of, I guess, mimosa. I mean, that was very orange. I, I don't know if it was an orange tub with, with water and food coloring. Can you imagine all the bottles? Going That's a lot of orange juice. You know what I mean? That's a lot of orange juice to waste. I don't, I would. You know, I don't appreciate they keep abusing alcohol in this company. I'm just yeah. saying. That's what I mean. I don't way, think it's real. <laughs> Did I talk about this on, on our last show that it was like our boy, Big Cruz, that uh, he was the one that took the yeah, dump Yeah, you said from, that last okay. episode. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So shout out to him. But uh, he was there also during this uh, the, this pay-per-view also in the, uh, the fans. So, but, you know, it was really weird. I, you know, I told you we were getting our orange juice spot, by the way. But I don't know. It was like weird, but it was funny. In a way, he he got a glass and he drank it. No, that doesn't count. (laughs) Okay, Ray, if you're listening, shut up. Because you don't know how much shit him and Brad gave me in my house. They're like, well, does that count, Tiff? He kind of hit him with the orange juice spot. I was like, it didn't come out of his mouth. But but it was the spot. I was like, you don't even know. Like for five minutes, they were arguing with me saying, well, that counts as the spot. I was like, it's not the spot. (laughs) It was an entertaining match, though. I think they did a very good job. I was... Uh, as hell. <laughs> I think it was it was it was decent match. It was funny and yeah. like the whole. I think it, it did a very good job. And obviously Jericho going in and, and <laughs> there's a lot of memes and yeah. pictures going around of him lying on in, in that tub. And oh god, it's just it's fantastic. <laughs> it was good. I I enjoyed I, I it. Guess salty. We didn't get Ortiz in there because I wanted to see him try to swim. Yeah, like the, <laughs> I was shocked. Like none of Inner Circle oh. came out. I wonder I really if Jericho is going to make a point of that. I wonder if he's now going to come out and die and be like, where were you guys? Yeah. Like, like why didn't you guys come out and help? Like, maybe there, maybe something's going to come out of that. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll see. That was fun, too. Um, the eight-man tag, I mean, we, me and Tiff go on about it. I was wrong. I thought for sure I, I read somewhere that it was going to be an elimination match. It ends up not being. But, again, we, we've, we've talked about eight-man tags. They're just all over the place, hard to keep track. I think they did a little bit better job with this one. Um, I think Dustin Rhodes was the standout. I know as much like Scorpio Sky, we want to rave on him and good for him for uh, being a good singles wrestler. But right. Dustin Rhodes, A, looked extremely like on top of his game throughout this entire match. Mm-hmm. And B, like the promo he cut after, after being told that he's going to get a TNT championship shot, was amazing he hit that promo with everything he got him the most passion i've ever heard out of him like with his like his new decade surely like five decades of this like oh man he is just like that was awesome and a it was the new du- it was blue dust it wasn't red dust it was blue dust <laughs> <laughs> i thought of you with that too that's the funny thing you know he comes out as blue i'm like okay that's interesting but uh yeah. it, w- it was all right i didn't mind it uh, we all thought for sure Dark Order was going to somehow win, but uh, Colt Cabana ends up kind of like costing Dark Order. We saw how mad Brody Lee was at Colt. I don't know if this is going to be the start of something because this was the first time Colt Cabana was in Dark Order colors. Like yeah. he usually he would come out wearing his still his shiny. same stuff, but he was like in a Dark <laughs> Order shiny <laughs> colored attire, and then he ends up failing for them. And Brody Lee did not like it. It's crazy because I thought we would have saw more Scorpio Sky, right? And I talked about this on the prediction show that I said that I could see Kaiga going either way. It was very hard for me to pick, but I was like, okay, with the fact that the Dark Order just won, you know, with Brody just winning the title, it would be smart for him to win. Um, But I also felt that I could kind of see the other side winning as well. Um, I love the little part that like Scorpio said, like when, when Anna Jay came into the rig and Scorpio grabbed her hand and then Brandy oh, yeah. came in and, and went after <laughs> her. It was really funny. Um, and I re- I was thinking about this and we talked a little bit the, about this as well with Dustin that, I mean, let's be real. Like he, he's been getting, he's been great, right? Like we, we enjoy him. Like he still has it in him to be wrestling and kudos to him. Like the question is, is this like starting to get his like downtime eventually like he'll get his shot at Brody for the title like it will eventually he fade out um you know and that we're finally getting a Scorpio sky run and it would have been great but I think it would have been too soon because I can kind of see Scorpio taking the TNT championship belt eventually but I think we need a little bit more build with Scorpio sky so I'm in a way I'm kind of happy about Maybe this by full gear hopefully like by full gear he gets a, I, I think he deserves to win it like on a big pay per view. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's it's on a dynamite. It's too lackluster for me. Yeah. I think for a guy like Scorpio Sky, if yeah. he's going to transcend into he a big that. singles career, it's got to be done on a big stage. So right. full gear. I hopefully it is 100%. Brody Lee versus Scorpio Sky. That would be something. But I think it would be too soon to drop the belt. 
right? Don't, like, wouldn't you feel it'd be too soon to drop the belt? I mean, he would have carried it. What he won it last month, he would have carried it all the way to maybe, November. That's not. That's not I that. No, like maybe not yet. I feel like we need to showcase Scorpio Sky a little bit longer. Maybe Revolution or double or nothing maybe but Ooh. we've talked about this before as well that scorpio sky is a star and 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 he should you know you know be given that platform on i think i agree with you he shouldn't win it on dynamite i agree he it needs to be on a pay-per-view yeah and we always talk about him and jericho right that like he should have more time so that's why i said i give him a little bit of a build i think it's too soon to take the belt off of brody Right, because I think eventually, like maybe him and Cody are gonna go at it. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe next year, I can kind of see it happening. Okay, okay. Maybe, I don't yeah, know. I, 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 get, I get behind like, that. Yeah, it's yeah. Good, give, it's... give him a little bit of a build. Like he's yeah. got to have a little bit of run. I think it's too soon. Like me personally, like knowing how he is, yes, give him the belt. Right, <laughs> like you and me feel like give him the belt, just give it to him. Right, but I don't know. Like again, we're very big on storytelling around here, so I would love to see this like build scorpio sky to be that beast in the mid card and i can see him taking the belt from brody so we'll see well let's talk about the moment of truth the main event or not i guess not the main event but i think probably the match of the night was the uh, world tag team championships uh, ftr against uh, kenny and hangman and obviously the big story here about what happened after but uh, as for the match itself it was solid. This was so good. They these two did a very good job. A lot of interesting things to pick out here. So one, Tully Blanchard, I saw it. I saw someone catch it right away. I caught it right away. Anyone see the horses on his back? He had some yes. horses on his jacket. We're getting more teases here. Uh Hangman was in long tights. I don't remember ever, ever seeing him yeah. in long tights ever. <laughs> as weird. as like, much as I've been I, watching him, like I was like it, interesting. I didn't like it. <laughs> Uh, Kenny had some really cool looking tights. Those were awesome to look yes. at. Those oh, are a really new here. design. I, I don't know if that's new or if he's worn those before. To, to my recollection, I don't remember him ever wearing tights like that. So those were really cool. Um, this match was so good. It was so good. They did a very good. So, it was a solid match. A lot of good tag team wrestling. But again, the story about how it happened after. So FTR wins. Um, we all we all saw that coming. It was it was time for the belts to change and, and the, the storyline to finally explode and. Did it ever explode? So Kenny Omega getting pissed off at, at Hangman. Like it was happening throughout the match, even after kicking the beers and then leaving Hangman there. And then Kenny leaving through the heel tunnel. Yeah. And then who does he meet in the heel? And you saw earlier in the night, the Young Bucks left through the heel tunnel as well. So he catches up with the Young Bucks out in the, the heel tunnel. They're walking to the parking lot and Kenny's just fuming and he, they're trying to calm him down. He's like, you know what? It's time for a clean start and go back to the, the way things used to be. Mm. Oh, okay. We're Let's kicking it off. Real. We're kicking I, it off. We all want Young Bucks and Kenny to be heel, right? We were talking about this too, but we have so many heels in AEW. How many heels are we going to have? So something so, happened on BTE today that I saw. Yeah. I didn't ha watch yet, but apparently yeah. Kenny and the Bucks are not even on the same page as well on B yeah. out of BTE today. So I'll have yeah. to go watch that after this, but uh, oh my God. So... I think we're getting to obviously we've talked about it, we're getting the cleaner, but the Bucks we're running getting the bad Bucks we're getting the the, the heel Bucks I now like where them. does yep. where does Hangman go from here What's happened Like he is just the, the spiral continues to go down for this guy Like he can't catch a break That's why I keep saying this the the way that it looks like the storyline is going is that Kenny will eventually take the like the cleaner will take the belt off Moxley and what better way than to have baby face Hangman Page take it from that's him That's true but how does Hangman better. get there though That's what I'm worried about Well Who, that's why who's going to help him up so Who what's time. happening here no, because he doesn't need it. We finally built Hangman Page to be the star. He's not in the background. So you think anymore. he's gonna he's gonna like build himself back up? Yes. He's gonna finally look at himself in the mirror and say, Okay, I have to do this on my own. Yeah. I'm a lone ranger. Yes. It's that's exactly okay. what I think is gonna happen. And I'm all for it and I'm all for but it was always the young bucks and Kenny, right? It's always been like that. And I feel like Hangman's always shaded in the background. And it's finally about time that hangman goes on his own and he doesn't need anybody and what better way and i can't imagine that victory i would love to be at that pay-per-view <laughs> when he wins i really would because it's gonna yeah, be that's one of gonna be a safer nice, back yeah. to normal again type of situation yeah that's why i say long-term booking it's yeah. storytelling it's so important and i think it's so and i really do 
believe this. I re I really do believe that that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong and that's fine, but like, I love this thinking, you know, that we could sit here and think about these, this process God, with and, AEW. Uh, so yeah, big, big teases all around, but, uh, we also had another tease and it was not even at the pay-per-view. It was on uh, Twitter yesterday. So Cody Rhodes, we haven't seen him in a long, in a long time now. Don't know what's going on with him. What does he do to yesterday? He blacks out his Twitter. Bio, gone. Picture, gone. Cover photo, gone. And then okay, tweets yeah. out this picture here. This his his nightmare family logo with blood leaking all over it. It's a new tattoo what on does his this neck. Mean? <laughs> new tattoo on he, his neck. <laughs> he covers it up with blood. <laughs> on the other side. No, on the other on side. On the other side. <laughs> Oh, he's got he's got a baby face tattoo and a heel tattoo. <laughs> yes. Which one am I? Imagine he's the one that joins the four horsemen. I think it is. I think it's Cody, uh, Cody, FTR, and Sean Spears. Mm. I don't know. Something tells me that's gonna happen. That all those. I know a lot of people are still with Hangman, but Hangman just. I think you're you right. It seems like he's going into the spiral that's gonna turn yeah. him into a really big baby face. So I know he's already kind of baby he face before, to. but he hasn't. Well, actually, he hasn't really been a babyface since last year when he was, uh, you know, going through that title run against Jericho. Yeah. After that, he kind of just went in, like a downward spiral. He became like an alcoholic and kind of like I, I wouldn't have considered him a babyface in this this whole run, this whole storyline. Yeah, I think I think he uh, finally found his character, right? Yeah. And and we're all gunning for him. So I really feel this is his time to shine. Like, I think this is what they originally wanted. I think that they really wanted Hangman, right? When we go back yeah. to the press conference, right? Last year, we had him and Pac, right? And like, that's what we originally thought that it was going to be one of those guys to hold it. But I think, you know, you needed to build Hangman. So that's why I say it's going to be that slow build. So I feel like it's that Shawn Michaels syndrome that when Shawn Michaels, like he started with the tag team titles and then he went to the you know the IC title, and then he he became the WWF champion back then. You know, so I feel like this Hangman, like that's where Hangman's gonna go, and that's why I said it's gonna mean a lot. So I think now he needs to build his character, and he needs, you know, like you said, I think he's gonna be this baby face. And okay. everybody loves the Young Bucks and Kenny heel, including myself. And I would love to see it. I mean, it will be crazy because we're gonna have a lot, like I said, a lot of heels. But that's okay. <laughs> I'm all for it if you give us good matches. So, so we'll yeah, see. it was and again interesting event all out. Probably wasn't their best pay per view of the year. It, I thought it was still all right. We still had some decent matches out of it. Obviously, there's a lot of things again, a lot of factors that played in that took a lot out of the pay per view. The Matt Hardy situation, the heat that affected the wrestlers and the fans, and the overall pace. And like we said in the beginning, that I think the time management needs to be done a little bit better. But again, they'll get they'll get this again through trial and error. They'll get it done. Um, Maybe next time they will start at 7 o'clock. I think 8 o'clock is a little bit too late if you're going to even do a four-hour pay-per-view. So we'll see. I'm hope I'm sure they'll have it fixed, obviously, by uh, the next one, which is uh, November 7th. They they had a trailer for for Full Gear. So, uh, yeah, we're on the road to Full Gear officially this Wednesday on Dynamite, which is sure to be a packed one, as uh, Tony Khan said. So, I mean, also it's jam-packed, guys. Is this Thursday, AEP 100. Or so, we're celebrating 100 episodes of all Elite Podcast is going to be a very fun and fan interactive show, guys. Uh, we'll probably touch base on Dynamite a tad, but again, it's going to be more focused towards us celebrating 100 episodes. We have a lot of fun stuff planned for it, so make sure you guys uh, check us out on Thursday. Keeping up with the podcast uh, and updates for it, so follow us at All Elite Pod. Make sure you're following the network at NHB Network. Uh, make sure you're following myself at Real Kyle Masters or right down there. You can see me at Real Kyle Masters and right below Tiff right there at Loves to Dream 82. You can follow all that, guys. And then uh, we have a link tree down in the description below if you're listening to us on the go. Come on over to the YouTube side. All our links are located in our description for you guys to follow. And if you are listening to us on the go, thank you very much to all our listeners. If you're uh, listening on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, especially Apple Podcasts, guys, if you were listening on there, do us a favor. Give us a nice five-star rating and let us know. Give us a comment on how uh, you've enjoyed anything on the network or even the All Elite podcast. So make sure you are uh, searching up the No Holds Bar Network, and that's where you can find us in audio platforms. And, yeah, so this has just been a quick – that's not quick. We're running around 55 minutes here, but uh, thank God we're doing this now because we I don't think we could have added this to Thursday's episode. No. But, uh, 
that uh, is going to wrap it up, guys, for this episode of the uh, 99.5 episode of the All Elite Podcast. Make sure you're joining us Thursday for our 100th episode. Uh, leave your uh, Hit the like button. Hit your subscribe button down below. And, uh, yeah, it's going to do it. Wrap it up. I am the uh, self-proclaimed greatest host, your master of ceremonies, Kyle Masters. Always joined by my co-host. She is known as the EVP Giggles, the heartbreak chick, the queen of the Indies herself. That's Tiffany. <laughs> Guys, join us again Thursday for the uh, 100th episode of the All Elite Podcast. Take it easy. I don't know.